the Lord is ready for you. It's going to do something unforgettable in your life. You will cooperate with God. You will never be the same again. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name today. Wipe away every pain, every sickness, all the suffering from your people today in Jesus' name. You'll manifest your power. You'll manifest your glory. And I pray that everyone will have a touch from above. Healing from above. Deliverance from above. Miracle from above. Salvation from above. Holiness from above. Every good thing we need for the spirit, for the soul, for the body. You will do it in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, go state, I said in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We're looking at John chapter 11. John chapter 11. We're coming here to celebrate the power of God. The power that takes every problem away. The power that heals the sick. The power that releases the oppressed. We're talking about the power that is able to save, able to sanctify, able to baptize in the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the power that whatever the yoke is able to break that yoke. The power that is able to take hold of your life and every evil thing that the evil one has put there, that power that will roll that thing away. We come to celebrate that power that cannot fail. It has never failed before. In your case, it will not fail. I said in your case, it will not fail. How do you make that power of God work in your life? How do you take hold of that supernatural power? The supernatural arm of the Lord that has solved every problem before, healed every sickness before. The supernatural power of God that has taken every other problem away in the lives of other people. And it comes to your turn today that in your own life, in your own family, in your own body, he will take hold of you and he'll take that problem away. I see the miracle coming upon your life. If you are lame, you will throw that stick away. You'll get out of that wheelchair. You will walk, you will run. If you are blind, your blind eyes will see. Anything you have, any body you have, any oppression you have, that thing that the evil people deposited in your life, it will be taken away. I'm talking to you on making God's power work in your life. The power of God is there. The anointing that breaks the yoke is there. The authority that never fails is there. How do you take hold of that power? How do you attract that power? How do you make that power work in your own life? Making God's power work in your life. I'm looking at John chapter 11. In John chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 39. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Verse 41. Then they took away the stone. Then they took away the stone. 
verse 43. When he does had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Latter part of that verse, Jesus said unto them, Loose him, let him go. I've read those selected verses to you. For you to know what the power of God can do. The power for life. The power for resurrection. The power was there all the time. From the time Jesus Christ was born. He was born in a miraculous way. Conceived in a miraculous way. Born in a miraculous way. He lived a miraculous life. And everything was supernatural about his life. Lazarus was sick. And they sent to him. They said, the man whom you love is sick. Please come quickly. And while he was coming, the man had died. But Jesus knew. There's nothing in your life that is strange to Jesus. He said, Lazarus, our friend, is asleep. Let us go and wake him up. For Jesus Christ, raising the dead is like waking up somebody who is sleeping. For him, everything is simple. He will wake you up. That's he that is dead in your brain. He'll wake it up. That's he that is dead in your kidney. They said livers are not working again. They're not functioning again. They are dead. The power of resurrection will wake you up in Jesus' name. They said it's a particular nerve or muscle or whatever in your leg. They said it's dead. That's why you cannot walk. And the thing is just hanging like this. Wonderful day. The power that traces the dead. The power that throws mountains away. Is coming to you right there. It will strike you and touch you. The dynamite that explodes. It will take all those evil things away. And then the Lord will say. Loose him and let him go. Where are you? I said, where are you? It's coming on your life in Jesus' name. Making God's power work in your life. How does that happen? Number one, Jesus said, take ye away the stone. He gave a precept. He gave a word. He gave a charge. He gave a commandment. An angel could have come and rolled the stone away. Angels could do that. When Jesus died and they buried him and they rolled the stone on the grave, an angel came and rolled away the stone. But this time, there is something for you to do. If Lazarus is to come forth, if that dead part of your body is to come out, if that miracle is to come, if the power of the Lord is to be fulfilled in your life, there is a commandment he calls you to carry out. And he says, take ye away the stone. Number one, the precept that never fades away. The precept that never vanishes. The same precept he gave that time. He's still giving the precept today. He can do all things. He will do all things. He must do all things in your life. But there is a precept. There's a commandment. There is a charge. There is a commission. It says, do this. Then, once you do that, 
take ye away the stone, the rest will be done. The precept that never fits. Number two, after Jesus has said, take ye away the stone, after he has told you, take away the stone, and you take away the stone, give me a good amen. Then he came and he said, Father, I know that you always hear me. But because of these people who are here, I said this. He said, the father always hears him. Point number two, the prayer that never fails. The prayer that never fails. Once Jesus pronounces that word about your healing, about your deliverance, once Jesus pronounces that word about your yoke, there is a prayer that never fails. Jesus is praying for you. I said Jesus is praying for you. And then we take the words of the prayer of Jesus and then we give it out. I will pray that prayer. That same prayer of Jesus, it will work in your life today. The prayer that never, never fails. Number three now. Number one, the precept. Number two, the prayer. Number three, the power. In the name of Jesus, there is power. In the word of Jesus, there is power. In the authority of Jesus, there is power. In the anointing, the Holy Ghost on Jesus, there is power. The power that never falters. It comes straight. And it comes straight at you. It's coming. I said it's coming. Where is it coming to? I said where is it coming to? It's getting to you there in Jesus name. As you believe you are going to see the glory of God. Making God's power work for you. The precept, the prayer, the power. Number one, the precept that never fades. I'm coming to John chapter 11, verse 39. Jesus said, take care with the stone. They thought everything had ended. Lazarus is dead. And when somebody is dead, it's a hopeless case. It's a helpless case. There's nothing they could do anymore. Because of that, they sealed it up. They said it's a permanent situation. The situation is final. That situation is not final in your life. Whatever men say, whatever men do, whatever anyone might have uttered concerning you, Thinking everything is over. We're going to open a new page today. A new chapter in your life today. Because that stone they put there. Jesus said a miracle is about to happen. Something great is about to happen. Something that you've never known is about to happen. Something you've never seen is about to happen. And because of that he says take ye away the stone the power of god is coming upon your life and when you do what the lord is saying to do and he gives you a precept and he gives you the commandment and he says here is the stone that you put there as if it is ended as if it is final and then he commands you he says you use your hand you put it there take it off And once you do what the Lord is asking you to do, and you take away that stone, power will enter into that grave. Lazarus will come forth in Jesus' name. The question is, how do you interpret that today? Take 
ye away the sword. Joshua chapter 7. The word of God interprets itself. It is not something where I think it means, I feel it means, I suggest. No, 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 no. No suggestion, no feeling. Let the word of God say what it means for you, what it means for everyone. Take care where the stone. Joshua chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 13. In Joshua chapter 7, verse 13. Up, sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed sin in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies, listen to this, until ye take away the accursed sin from among you. The Lord are forbidding something in their lives. And he said that is an accursed thing. Don't touch it. Don't take it. Don't hold it. Don't take it home. That accursed sin, they took. Somebody in Israel took that. And they thought, we can still pray. And they thought, he has given us the land. And they thought, the promised land is ours. And so, they went to the battlefield. They were defeated. Then Joshua began to cry to the Lord. He began to pray. Oh Lord, why will this happen to us? Oh Lord, reverse the situation. Change the situation. Give us the victory again. Give us the deliverance again. Give us that victory, triumph, and dominion once again. And the Lord said, I will do it. I'll fulfill the promise. I'll manifest my great power in your life. But it will not happen until ye take away the accursed sin. What's there in your life? That God says, this is a symbol of of disobedience. This is a symbol of rebellion. This is a symbol of disregarding me. I told you not to take that evil thing. That idol. Take it away. That evil. Take it away. That accursed thing that God says this shall not be in your life. Take it away. It's not just one, I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray. Yes, you will pray. God is mighty. God is powerful. I will not work, I will not act until you take away that accursed sin from among you. And the children of Israel did exactly that. They discovered that Achan are taking the forbidden sin. They got rid of that sin and then God began to work. You will take that accursed sin away. Some people, they want their accursed sin to be there. I love it. I want it. I like it. I'm going to keep it. And yet, give me miracle. Miracle doesn't come that way. You take the stone away and the miracle will come. Miracle is coming your way. Power is coming your way. Healing is coming your way. Take care with the stone. That accursed sin in your life. That evil sin in your life. That sin in your life. Not only confess, you confess and forsake. You throw it away. It will not be part of your life anymore. 
That's thing you do in the secret. Other people have not seen. He can do it in the secret. Many people did not know. But God knew. What are you holding? What are you keeping? What idolatry are you practicing? What evil thing are you doing? What wickedness is in your life? What evil is in your life? You will confess. You will forsake. You will throw it away. And the miracle will follow. Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. I'm reading from verse 9. You will see what the Lord is saying when he says, take it away. Take this stone away. Isaiah chapter 58. I'm reading from verse 9. Thou shalt call, and the Lord shall answer, and thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Listen to this. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and the speaking of vanity. It says, I'm a God who answers prayer. You will call and I will answer. You will cry and I will say, here I am. On one condition. You will take away the yoke. What does that mean? The yoke of oppression you put on other people. You are a master, you put a yoke of oppression on your servants, on the people that are serving you. You are an employer, you put a yoke upon your employees. It says, yes, I can answer your prayer. Yes, I can take the problem away. Yes, I can solve your problem. You must take the yoke of oppression away from the lives of other people. Somebody has a child, you are not happy. Somebody is pregnant, you are not happy. You tie them up. You go to church. And you have that evil sin in your life. You bring all the people under a yoke. They will not succeed. They will not have children. They will not have this or that. And you are the one binding them, putting a yoke on them. And now you come. Oh God, I hear that you are performing miracles. I hear that you are healing the sick. I hear that you are doing this and doing that. Yes, of course, God is working miracles. God has never changed. His power remains the same. That padlock you locked up and you locked up the life of another person, can you open it? As long as you lock up other people, your destiny too will be locked up. If you take away the yoke, you take away the putting forth of the finger. Accusation, accusation, accusation. False report, evil report. You are the one that is taking all the stories of other people away. He said, if you take that away, miracle will come. You are the one that knows what everybody is eating in the morning, what they eat at the restaurant, what a husband and wife, what they are talking. And you are the one blasting that and taking it away, accusing them. That one they put in the choir is not a good person. That person preaching is not a good person. That one is not a good person. You are the one that is putting for the finger of accusation. God says, and you want a miracle. Take that away. And they're speaking of vanity. All that vain language. All the vain or trans communication. The language that is dirty. The language that brings only vanity does not bring victory of virtue. 
the language of your mouth. It says, put that away. Take that away. It says, yes, I'm going to answer prayer. I'm going to do something great. I'm going to do something supernatural. But there is a precept that has not faded away. A precept that is still there today. It was there that time. Take ye away the stone. And it comes to you with that precept and commandment that is still there. And it says, take ye away the stone. You will do it. I said you will do it. Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. I'm reading to you from verse 4. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 4. This is what he tells us. Verse 4. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Take away the filthy garments from me. You look around today. Uh, people, they tell themselves. They can't tell me. They can't tell us. They say, it doesn't matter. You can even go naked to your church. It doesn't matter. They say, the lady can wear something so scanty that you see everything she don't see and it brings filthy thoughts to your mind. They say, it doesn't matter. God is only looking at the heart. That's what they say. God doesn't say that. Feel the garments. Feel the dressing. They dress in such a way they bring filthiness, they bring sin, they bring defilement into the house of God. The maid at home is dressing in such a way, exposing herself, wants to break the marriage of Madame. Madame has employed her to be a maid, to do this and that, and the way she dresses is so filthy. And then she comes, I want miracle. Yes, God will work miracle. That filthy garment, take it away. I'm a member of the church. I'm a member of the church. They're going to see the pastor. I come for counseling. I come for this. And the way they dress, filthy, defiling. You want to make that by pastor go to hell? He says, you want a miracle, take ye away the stone. That fill the garment, that fill the dressing, take it away. And as you obey the word of the Lord, the precept that never fades, that to say, yes, Lord, here I am. If you want the Lord to listen to you, you too, you must listen to the Lord. I'll say, yes, Lord, I will. Yes, Lord, I will. And as you do, I'm telling you something great is going to happen. I said something great is going to happen. The power is there. The authority is there. The anointing that breaks the yoke is there. And Jesus was still waiting. He said, Martha, no argument. There's no discussion here. All I want is not talk, talk, talk. It's not pray, pray, pray. Go take away that stone. If you obey and believe, you will see the glory of God. You will obey. I said you will obey. The glory of God will come upon your life. The miracle of the Lord will come upon your life. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. It says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking 
be put away, taken away from you with all malice. That's what he's telling us. He said, there is a stone on that grave that is hindering resurrection power from walking on your Lazarus. Bitterness. Can you imagine? The love of God comes to save you. The love of God comes to make your life sweet. Your thoughts are bitter. Your mind is bitter. You're bitter against your children. Bitter against your wife. Bitter against your husband. Bitter against your neighbors. You're bitter against the brethren. I want miracle. I want miracle. For the miracle to come on top of the bitterness. For the deliverance to come on top of the bitterness. You must clear that away. And it says, all forms of bitterness, all wrath, all anger. Here today, you find uh, people excusing anger in the life of the believer. The church people, they fight. They know how to fight more than the people of the world. They are angry. Angry. And the Lord says, that's the stone you are to take away. If your miracle is important to you, if the power of the Lord is important to you, if the glory of God is important to you, if you want the manifestation of the power of the Lord in your life, it says, all bitterness, all wrath, all anger, all evil speaking and he says all malice he says you put that away and then when you put that away there's going to be a change there's going to be a transformation and be ye kind 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 one to another tender hearted forgiving one another forgiving one another then he says as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you I will do it what are you I will do it ah your voice is not sounding well you will do it in Jesus name because that's what Jesus said he said, I'm going to walk in your life. I'm going to roll that problem away. I'm going, that Lazarus there, he will come back again. That dead part of your body will come alive again. That healing, it will take place. That resurrection power will come into that grave and wake up Lazarus. But the precepts that never fades away. That he, he says, take that stone away. Once you do that, I said, once you do that, the prayer that never fails, the prayer that never fails. I'm reading from John chapter 11. John chapter 11, I'm reading from the second part of verse 41. John chapter 11, second part of verse 41. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I thank thee because you have heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Always, every day, every week, every time, every program, the prayer of Jesus for you will be answered. It says, but because of the people which 
stand by, I search at, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. The Lord will answer your prayer today. Because there is no situation that is so terrible, so deadly, that the Lord cannot reverse. Look at verse 22. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. Salvation. Whatsoever. Sanctification. Whatsoever. Holiness. Whatsoever. Healing. Whatsoever. Deliverance. Whatsoever. Miracle. Whatsoever. Resurrection. Whatsoever. Restoration. Whatsoever. Even now I know that whatsoever you will ask of the Lord, he will give it to you. The prayer that never fails. That prayer will never fail in your life. Jesus has the name that overcomes every problem. Jesus has the name that solves every problem. And that name is mighty and powerful this morning. In Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9 here. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That have the name of Jesus every knee should bow. The knee of cancer, that also the knee will bow. That insanity, the knee will bow. Evil power, evil spirit in your life, the knees of everything will bow to the name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name of Jesus has authority and power. And he has the power to drive away that evil thing out of your life. But you will take away the stone. You take away that sin. You're going to confess and forsake and throw away that evil thing. You're going to say, I hate evil. I love Jesus. I love salvation. I hate sin. I love holiness. I hate to go to hell. It is when you show that love unto the Lord and whatever is against the will of God in your life, you take it and throw it away, a miracle will strike you right there. Matthew chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 8 from verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. That word that heals is coming your way today. The word that sets the captive free is coming your way today. But I'm a man on authority, having soldiers under me. 
In verse 9, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth each. When Jesus had each, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. In verse 13, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the cell same hour. His servant was healed in the self same hour. When are you going to be healed? This same hour. When are you going to be delivered? This same hour. When will the yoke in your life be broken? This same hour. And the moment you take that away, the power of God will flow in. The moment you take that away, the authority of the name of Jesus will break every yoke in your life. Mark chapter 11. Reading from verse 22. Mark 11 verse 22. Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. The God of all possibilities, the God of power, the God of miracle, the God of signs and wonders, the God who has supernatural power to take away your problem. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have, I shall have, you will have, we shall have whatsoever we we'll say. Verse 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Ye shall have them. Ye shall have them. What are you? Ye shall have them. You have something in Jesus' name. But you know, brothers and sisters, that is where people stop. But you know, Jesus did not stop there. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and when ye stand praying, forgive. Don't hold bitterness in your heart. Once, when you stand praying, Forgive. Don't say anger. Stay on this side. I want to pray with this side of my heart. When you stand praying, forgive. You can't say retaliation. Stay there. Don't go. Don't go. Stay there. I'm praying now. When I pray, when I finish prayer, get my miracle, I will deal with him. Retaliation, hold on. Let me pray now. When ye stand praying, forgive. That woman, my wife, I will deal with her. She doesn't know me, but nothing now. I'm praying now. Retaliation, anger, fighting, Stay around, but 
don't raise up your head now. When I finish praying, I will resume that fight. When ye stand praying, forgive. That's the stone you will take away. If you don't take the stone, God is powerful. God is mighty. Jesus has resurrection power. He will wait for you. Jesus is not in a hurry. It's not in a hurry if uh, nobody receives anything today. It wants to take the thing away. If it's tomorrow you are ready, then it will come. But you must take that stone away. He answers prayer. He wants miracles. But he's not working miracle to entertain me or entertain you. He's mightily serious about his precept. He's not just wanting hallelujah, praise the Lord and shouting, throw his stick here, throw his stick here. Yes, that can happen. But Jesus is not an entertainer. He wants you to take the stone away. He wants you to take the bitterness away. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. He is not healing people on their way to hell who want to enjoy themselves while going to hell. When ye stand praying, forgive. That's what the Lord has said. He wants that holiness to remain intact while you are looking for healing. He says, if ye have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But 26, but if ye do not forgive, if you say, uh-uh, I'm going to retaliate. Uh -uh. I'm going to remain angry. Uh -uh. I'm going to remain in sin. Okay. If you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. But as you obey the Lord, I say, Praise the Lord. I'm a believer in Christ. I know He's able to do all things. I know he can wake up Lazarus. I know what he's waiting for is for me to take away that stone. Once you take away that stone, power. I said power. A dynamite will come into that grave. Lazarus will come forth in Jesus' name. The precept that never fades. The prayer that never fails. The power that never falters. The power that never falters. I'm looking at John chapter 11. John chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 43. Once you take away the stone, you'll see his manifestation in your life. You'll see his glory in your life. Because he's able, able to do beyond what you are asking. He's able to do, able to heal, able to deliver, able to set free. And because he's a God of skill and ability and might and power. He cannot fail, he will not fail. John chapter 11 verse 43. John 11 verse 43. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. You are coming for today. Lame man, come forth. Blind man, come forth. That sick, invalid, impotent, but reading there, rise up. Come forth in Jesus' name. The man that was bound. And he says, bound man, come forth. Lepers, come forth. 
every leprosy, every incurable disease in your body can be taken away. When you hear that voice, when you hear that prayer, the prayer that cannot fail, the prayer that can never fail, the name of Jesus that can never fail, and the power that never falters, that nobody can resist that power. Sickness hears that voice and it's gone. Evil spirit hears that voice and it's gone. Satan hears that voice and is gone. And when you respond to that voice coming from the throne of God. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. You will feel that power in your body. You will know that power in your spirit. That power will wake you up. But the stone, the stone, the stone. You take away that stone. And after that, come and see resurrection power. After that, come and see healing power. After that, come and see mountain moving power. After that, come and see miracle walking power. Take ye away the stone. And then the power that never falters. The power that never falters. Verse 44. And he that was dead came forth. And he that was dead came forth. The voice of Jesus will wake up the dead. The voice of Jesus will wake up every dead part of your body. That voice has authority. It's a dynamite. It will blow up every negative thing in your life in Jesus' name. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. All the chains that bind you. All the fetters that bind you. That place of captivity, that uh, prison, the doors will be open. All the things that hold you down. All the things that chain you down. That padlock of the enemy, today it is opened. You couldn't move before. You couldn't do anything before. You were just lying down there. And they were crying on you. They were weeping on you. It's all over. It's gone. It'll never come again. Look at this and look at that. And here comes Jesus. And he says, I am the life and the resurrection. And he comes with power and authority. And he knew what he was going to do. Before he even got there, he said, Lazarus, our friend, is asleep. Let us go and wake him up. I see somebody over there. He's waking you up right now. I see somebody over there. You're bound there on the wheelchair. You want to go to the toilet? Can you push me to the toilet? And then they say the toilet is far away there. Then you begin to cry, how will I get there? Look at Jesus in front of you. I said, look at Jesus in front of you. I said, look at Jesus in front of you. And he says, what's your name? Give me your name. I said, what's your name? I said, what's your name? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Come forth. I said, come forth. There is something inside your heart now that is jumping. There's something inside your soul that is rising up. Come forth. Where are you? Come forth. I said, where are you? Come forth. I said, where are you? Come forth. Power is coming. Come forth. Authority is coming. Come forth. Healing has come. Come forth. 
Deliverance has come. Come forth. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. This is your day. The power of God is coming your way. Anointing is coming your way. Authority is coming your way. You will come forth. You will come forth. You will come forth. Healing is coming. Anointing is coming. Power is coming. Come forth. He wants to do it. What stone is there? What sin are you hiding here? What a constant sin is there? Take it away. Now what forbidding sin are you holding on to? Take it away. And what is the bitterness, anger, revenge you are holding on to? Take it away. What secret sin are you holding there? Take it away. Take ye away the stone. Jesus is not an entertainer. Jesus has not come to entertain anybody. Jesus is not entertaining you. Jesus wants to take all the sin of your life away. He wants you to confess and forsake. He wants you to confess and forsake that hidden sin, that secret sin, that evil in your life is going to hinder you from getting to heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men. Don't follow conflict with all men. Follow peace with all men. Don't follow conflict with all men. Follow peace with all men. Don't follow angry relationship with all men. Follow peace with all men. The Lord is calling you right now. And the Lord is saying, Take ye away the stone. Take ye away the stone. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. You take that evil sin away from your life. That secret sin, take it away from your life. That bitterness, take it away from your life. That idol worship, take it away from your life. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. He wants to heal you. But you must take that sin away. He wants to deliver you. But you must take that evil sin away. That a cause sin will hinder your miracle. That a cause I see will hinder your miracle. And the Lord is saying, take that stone away. You will confess and forsake. Jesus is not coming here to play. He's not coming here to entertain sinners. He's not coming here to entertain backsliders. He wants all that backsliding taken away. He wants all that secret sin taken away. And once you do that, once you do that, no more sin, no more secret sin, no more fighting, no more violence, no more wickedness, no more evil. Then he will manifest his power. Are you doing that right now? Are you saying, Lord, forgive me? Lord, change my life. Lord, turn my life around. Take all these evil things away from me. I want to be a committed, saved Christian. Born again. Born again. Born again. All those evil things, I don't want them anymore. Lying, I don't want that anymore. Deception, I don't want that anymore. Fighting, I don't want that anymore. Violence, I don't want that anymore. Secret sin, I don't want that anymore. Lord, change my life. Lord, change my life. Lord, change my life. Make me righteous. Give me the power to go and sin no more. The power to live in righteousness. The power to live in holiness. So that that stone is not in my life anymore. Lying not in my life anymore. 
backsliding not in my life anymore. All the secret, secret sin behind the curtain, not in my life anymore. Cleanse me, wash me with the blood of Jesus. Change my life and turn me around. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Take care with the stone. Take care with the stone. And say, Lord, here am I today. Lord, here am I today. I lay my life on the altar right now. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I take away the stone. I will serve you. In spirit and in truth. I will serve you. In holiness and righteousness. All the days of my life. That stone I take away will never come back again. Thank the Lord. He forgives. Thank the Lord. He sets free. Thank the Lord. That stone will never come back again. Righteousness and holiness before him all the days of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Have you taken away the stone? I I'm asking you. Have you taken away the stone? Where are you now? You took away that stone. Are you serious? I can't hear you now. And that stone will never come back there again. Wonderful. Everybody say wonderful. Wonder of all wonders, something is coming your way. But I am going to shock you. You know, some people, they think maybe we're looking for entertainment. They think we're looking for jumping. I'm not looking for that. They think if we don't see crutches raised up, will they be disappointed? I'm not disappointed. Christ is mighty and powerful. He's able, I know he's able to do all things. I know he can open the eyes of the blind. I know he can make the lame to walk. If you do not have your blind eyes open, I'm not disappointed. If you don't jump and run, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, I'm not disappointed. I know it's because you didn't take away the stone. I just look, I say, look at him, look at him. The power of God is flowing. The power of God is mighty. And he lost that stone. He lost that bitterness. He lost that sin so much. He's holding on to, I pity you. But the people who know that God is able to do all things. And they take away the stone. And they're ready for that mighty dynamite from heaven to blow out and to blow away all infirmities from their body. I challenge you if you have taken away that stone and that seed, something is coming your way. The power of God is coming your way. Something is happening right now. I said something is happening right now. I said something is happening right now. If you are there, where are you? I'm going to pray. And when I mention that name of Jesus, the name above every name, the name that spells power, the name that makes authoritative dynamite to blow out every problem. When I mention that name, that miracle is coming. I said it's coming. Keep up that hand. When you hear the final amen, your Lazarus will come forth. When you hear that final amen, that thing that is dead, 
That seed that is not functioning. That seed that is buried. That seed that is almost forgotten. When you hear that final amen, something will jump inside your soul. Dynamite will reach you in Jesus' name. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We well, thank you because you are a God that says what you mean and you mean what you say. Lord Jesus, we thank you. You are the same yesterday, today and forever. You have given us the precept that will never fade away. To take away the stone. And Lord, your people have obeyed you. Taking that stone of sin away. That stone of bitterness away. That stone of unbelief away. That stone of unforgiveness away. That stone of retaliation away. That stone of anger away. Oh Lord, I pray. You cleanse them and wash them. Make them righteous and holy in Jesus name. Lord, we thank you. We know you cannot fail. Your power will never fail. I send forth your power right now. I send forth your power right now. Oh Lord, I pray. You heal the sick in Jesus' name. The power that raised up Lazarus. The power of life and resurrection. To come into everyone right there now. Lord, heal them now. Deliver them now. Set them free in Jesus' name. That spirit of insanity. I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. Those paralyzed legs, withered hands, weak backbone, corpse backbone, I send for the power of God unto you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Rise up and come forth in the power of the Lord. In the anointing of the Lord. Come forth in Jesus name. Those blind eyes. The power of Christ is still opening the blind eyes today. And I command those blind eyes be opened and begin to see in Jesus name. Those who are deaf and dumb. Resurrection power. Miracle working power, mountain moving power will move that deafness away right now, that dumbness away right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that cancer will not stay there, that ulcer will not remain there, the fibroid will not remain there, HIV, AIDS will not remain there. Every incurable disease, every disease that's a killer, I speak for the word right now. Word of power and authority. Be healed in Jesus' name. Any miracle, every miracle you need, I send for that dynamite in your life. The power in your life. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be delivered in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. That stone will never come back again. That sin will never come back again. That bitterness will never come back again. That unforgiving spirit will never come back again. Lord, I thank you. Healing has come. Deliverance has come. Power has come. Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. 
and Ogo State people said it has happened. I said it has happened. I said it has happened. Check up yourself. You'll see the stone is gone and the sickness is gone. 